Good afternoon. My name is Kanya Naska. I'm curator of the educational program, Linoleum Festival. And we move on with this year's festival's presentations. And today, within the framework of media art, we have the second lecture that is called A Body Without a Spirit, a human being in the Ukrainian uh, um, motion pictures art. And here with us is Katerina Yakovlenko, who is a journalist, a researcher, as well as curator of uh, programs in Pinchuk Arts Center. As all of our lectures, uh, today it's going to last about 50 minutes, and after that I will be able to read out loud your questions. So please, leave your comments uh, below our live broadcast, so that we can later have a short discussion with Katerina. Thank you for being with us today. Over to you. Then I would like to start with my presentation. Last year, my lecture in the... Uh, Linoleum Festival was dedicated exclusively to practices in the 90s and to video art from that time. And I was mainly talking about connection of uh, motion picture and TV. And today, I would like to expand this topic and talk about other influences, other examples but still I would like to start my story with the 90s because it is considered that back then the whole thing started in Ukraine and very often it is called video art and media art but in my view this is not quite the right name and please allow me to explain why for example on the first slide of a presentation you can see two screenshots the screenshots from video called distorting mirrors uh, living pictures which were done by Ex Alexandra Hnelitsky, Maxim Mamsikov and Natalia Filoninka the participants of the squad uh, Paris Commune uh, in the 90s and uh, back then Alexandra Hnelitsky he studied in Arts Academy, Maxim Mamsikov also studied there, but uh, he was slightly younger. Natalia Filoninka did not do art, but we know her mainly as curator, but back then she was also experimenting. And it is considered uh, that at a certain point in time, Alexander Gnilitsky got his hands on uh, a video camera and uh, he started uh, first trials with uh, this tool but as uh, they didn't have uh, any proper background in terms of how to work with the camera how to shoot and what uh, the motion picture art should look like they started uh, doing their first experiments uh, it all was quite intuitive this video is called uh, distort and mirrors live and pictures and uh, one of the criticists, uh, Alexandra Solovio, says that this is not video as such. They still are the pictures that uh, the students uh, were working with, Alexander Hnelitsky and Maxim Mamsikov, but using a different medium. So a picture that we see on the screen reminded of the psychedelic um, things that you could see in their paintings. And now we can see several bits from this video. Alexander Hnelitsky, Natalia Filoninka, Maxim Mamsikov, Distorted Mirrors, Learn Pictures, 
We can look at yet another bit, another bit of the same video. The thing is that back then they had several versions of this video and you can see that they are slightly different. But I hope that now our technicians will show you the second bit. These videos were exhibited at several exhibitions and they were filmed thanks to the distorted mirrors, real mirrors, that Alexander Gnilitsky found according to one story at Sydney Market and according to another story he uh, uh, exchanged them for something in a theater. Studio that we just saw has to do with another artwork, but I'd like to finish talking about Gnilitsky. He had several videos, there were three of them in a room, and they were filming their reflection in distorted mirrors because optics of distorted mirror makes your body and the picture completely different and enlarges certain parts of your body or makes others smaller. That is why the picture transformed and it seems that these are not three different bodies but as if it is one body or a body of one human being or a body of some kind of being. Nikita Kanang once wrote that it is interesting to look at these artworks uh, through the optics of queer culture because uh, you can see certain transgression going from one state to another and this transgression is specifically important because back in the day the changes in society were happening economic changes, political changes and cultural changes. The artists uh, who had academic background uh, never came across modern art. They were getting their hands on everything they could and tried to create artwork using it. including this kind of moving pictures. They were trying to make this picture as dance or do something. That is why not only the format of the video was important, but also how it was uh, shown. They tried to, to do things as immersive as possible so that the viewer who is looking at it does not only see the picture but also how this picture is represented and for example this artwork was once uh, uh, shown on a ship called Slavutic in Sevastopol the exhibition was uh, called uh, a chemical capitulation and on the flags you could see video and uh, the curator Marta Kuzma has chosen the elements of uh, scenes close to pornography and uh, many uh, researchers say that this is uh, like a part of this transgression on the one hand the fleet was divided between russia and ukraine on the other hand territory was also being divided there are still well all of the political and economic changes undergoing but this ship became the center with completely different energy including uh, sexual energy and this exhibition was perceived uh, in a quite mixed way but uh, many media including foreign ones wrote about it there was even uh, a mention of it in New York Times but let's go back to the Ukrainian context uh, and uh, the first attempts of working with video 
And for example, if we go to Odessa, which uh, is very closely located to Crimean Peninsula, you can first see ties with Kiev, and on the other hand, uh, the desire of the artists who wanted to, to present it as part of an installation. And very often Odessa is mentioned as a place where these videos were part of some video installations or simple installations. And there's a small bit of the video that we saw before and an artwork by Hlip Kachuk, 1997, Apocalypso. He was filming himself, uh, trying to capture the bodily changes, how the video interacts with TV, with moving picture, how his body acts in this context, what other optical illusions you can come up with. And also, on the one hand, these were his intuitive attempts to somehow m change uh, the picture to remove the documentary component, make it more abstract, add some psychedelic effect. And this artwork called Apocalypso is also quite similar to the previous one because the body transforms as a result of certain interferences, not the technological one, but the optical one. Talking about similar artworks, we could mention a video called Comparative Anatomy, created by Tatiana Hershenin, Kirill Chichkan, 1995. And here you again see this element of studying your own body. The specifics of this video is that uh, they are filming different parts of both male and female body, but they do not show the body as a whole. That is why there is no clear understanding of whom do we see. Is it a woman who has certain male-looking features, or is it vice versa? So, in our imagination, we also get a completely different picture, and our imagination is drawing a completely other character that does not exist in reality. This can be compared to, to a child who, up to three years old, is studying themselves, their body. This probably is how artists in the beginning of the 90s tried to also study their body, their artistic interests, and trying to understand how this can be implemented in certain form. Another example is artwork by Natalie Hankevich, Katolikos. This also is an artist from Odessa, but for a while he had been working in Moscow, and Moscow specifically had impact on his works. He is well known thanks to his installations and drones, uh, which imitates um, uh, the Dutch painting, but uh, he was also working with video. And what you can see now on the slide, this is the installation gesture. In the middle of the cross, there is a video depicting him, where he looks like Jesus crucified. And this video is uh, a cycle. We see us getting closer to this hero, but then it again starts moving away and it keeps repeating over and over again. This is, on the one hand, it was like a joke, him comparing himself to Jesus Christ, but on the other hand, he wanted to demonstrate, he wanted to raise this topic uh, of something spiritual and sacred that exists uh, in the modern day. What is important? What is religion? What is something that is sacred? Because the new technology is coming and it seems that they are depriving us of this emotional state and this connection to something that is sacred. Vasil Sagola was interested in the same topic. But again, this also is not that traditional type of video. 
This is a part of performance. Uh, this is video that was documenting what was happening, and it is uh, an independent art project he created thanks to Art Blank Gallery, which back in the day existed in Kiev and uh, was uh, quite active. Vasil Tsegolov decided to start brooding over what happens when a person falls asleep or what happens to the person's brain when a person dies. So he went to the first aid unit and uh, created this performance by giving himself an injection which uh, forced him to sleep. And according to the observers, witnesses who were present there back then, when he was uh, there, he said Mama in Ossetian language because he was born in Ossetia, but uh, he never knew that language. And for the largest part of his life, he had been living in Russia. In the end of the 80s, he moved to Kiev and uh, since then he has been living and working here so this language obviously somehow was his subconscious at the subconscious level we can take a look at this video So, in fact, I already mentioned that there is no any precise, clean genre as video art, and rather often the history of Ukrainian motion and moving picture includes documentation of certain exhibition and also fixation of certain performances, parts of video installations, for instance, at this picture at this slide, you can see the work of Tatiana Gershuni, who I already mentioned above, which has the name of Past Perfect Times. Tatiana Gershuni, and she, aka Taya Galagan, is the, an artist who first started in Kyiv at the Fines Art uh, and Art History Department. Then he had an opportunity to study abroad. She was one of the first artists to get education abroad in the modern art sphere. So she dealt with animation and later she even taught animation in Canada. So she was really interested with the motion and moving pictures. So I've already shown the screenshots from the common work with Chichkan and this work has been done by her on her own and in this work as well as in the previous one you could see a certain surrealistic allusions she has 
shown the room where she located the ch children's pictures and drawings of some ununderstandable characters, either from the cartoons or from her children's dreams, whom she zoomed in up to the height of a human being. She located them in the room and gave them a kind of fluorescent lighting. The blue one under which you could see the radiation of those drawings. And when the people entered this room, they felt certain fear because of those characters, because they did not understand what will go on and happen after that. According to the words of the artist herself, she didn't know, she couldn't articulate this work then, but later she got to know that the similar practices were done by the artist from Canada, where she was studying earlier, where she has been studying, and this work has been done when he analyzed his autistic state. He had the autistic spectral disease, and the same belongs to this artist. She says that creating these works, she as if analyzes her internal state and is trying to speak about it. So this work now exists in several variations as the photo documents and video documents of one of the Ukrainian TV channels, which filmed it and documented the whole exhibition process. In the second part of the 90s, you could see an opportunity for the artists to get, to get certain courses on video art or digital art. And thanks to the modern art center of Soros, they've created the laboratory where they could come and practice their knowledge and skills. And this laboratory was also created in Odessa, where the artists also as well could experiment with these media. So, thanks to these knowledge through the workshops conduction and the opportunity to get a bit of uh, artistic education, which was never there in the academic one, the artist decided to drive more attention to the digital media, to the digital sphere and to create computer art. These were the works by Anna Artemenko and Ivan Tsupka. You could see the, work, uh, the screenshot of their video works Noise, created in 2002. And the artists of this period as it's mostly mentioned by the researchers, still experimenting, but in comparison with the 90s, they are creating more conceptual works. They think over every detail, and in fact, they're really interested not only by the plot, the whole idea, but they are also interested in the technical part, and they also practice some common works. They help each other, and in fact, this is where they had this duo of Anna Artemenko and Divana Tsupko. They all together worked separately, but in this work they decided to cooperate. So the history of this video is the history about a kind of an alien who is just interfering into the image of the TV. And we do not see his image, we don't see how he looks like in full height, we can see only certain details, a hand or a head, which can be seen through those glitch, glitch TV noise, but we don't see the person himself, and the artists were interested whether this image is real. Where's this limit between the real and surreal, and can and how can we reflect this reality technologically, and how can we distort it? And here, as you can see, there is a different work of Ivan Tsupka, The Research of Human Heart, and Karaoke by Natalia Golibroda. Those are the artists who then were rather active, paying attention to the human being impacting the image on the screen in the gallery space. And the work of Ivan Tsupka is created through the rhythms of human heartbeat. The app reads those heart rhythms 
and it provides a certain movement to the work of Ivan Tsupka. The same as done in the work of Natalia Golibroda Karaoke, we can see the picture if, for instance, a man is entering, you will see a woman on the room, in, uh, on this image. And if the woman enters the room, the man will be on the image. They're standing just behind the shield and you will see that there is the water pouring from the shower and the person is washing himself or herself. But to see the picture, the person had to sing. Depending on the length of the song, the character would wash and shower that long. In case if the man was sinning, the woman was washing herself and vice versa. So just approximately then, Oksana Chapelik decided to begin to work with video. That is the artist who also had the non-artist background but the architecture one. During the 90s, she, like Tatiana Gershini, got European education. She studied for a certain period of time in Paris and there she found certain interest in various topics which she is still developing. For instance, the motherhood, feminism topics, the role of a woman in the art or in the culture. So this work we may say that it consists of several parts and the artist continues it still. So we can see this motherhood topic reflected in it. The artist herself in this work is reflecting with her own experience. And we can see the video now. Birth adds to the collective image of newborn baby. The multimedia installation incorporates the overwork sound of DNA. Its melody was recorded by American scientists and every subsequent verse echoes with a powerful audio splash obtained during an ultrasound scan of human arteria. The video projection of a double layer image of newborn baby and ultrasound image of an inflatable balloon changes each time an internet signal announces another birth which occurs approximately every two minutes in New York, every 20 minutes in New Mexico, on average every one minute in California and on average every one and a half minutes in Ukraine. Inflatable balloon of 5 meters diameter fulfilled through helium is installed in outdoor in urban space to serve as a spherical screen for video projection which dominated city even sky, leading its own urban dialogue with the architectural verticals and icons, which works from the micro-macro symbols of region as a cell to the global scale as a planet. It has got Arts Link Award. It is capable of generating a wide spectrum of situations and reactions from euphoria to reference to the scandalous fact like the steam cell trade as a part of reality. The US population is going to shrink while New York and Los Angeles population grows. The project doesn't give prescriptions or appeals to act but questions about social space, the code of existence and life of people. So this also used to be the part of the video documentation and this work, as I already mentioned, exists in several parts. This is one of the parts of the bigger cycle and it has been created together with other artists. For instance, the sound, this noise you've heard, was the music composed by an American composer based upon the impulses, medical impulses. When you hear the breath and the heartbeat of a baby through the device. And also this bigger sculpture as a sphere which is installed in the air 
Above certain part of the city has been also constructed on purpose, so there was the projection on it of those newly born children, those babies, in different places. Oksana Cepelik is transforming this project in various places. For instance, one of the first places and locations were, were favela in Rio de Janeiro. This was a rather poor and criminal part of the city. And when Oksana wanted to create this project, she was told that maybe it's totally not real, as this city has mafia as the authorities. And only when she got the deal with the Mafia, she could launch this sphere and the projection. So when the whole favela saw the pictures of their own children, the babies and the people who are living in this part of the city, they understood the force of the art, they felt this unity with the artist, and she's still a person of a high authority there, because it's understandable that it can lead to nothing bad and vice versa. In this way, she is communicating and promoting their own rights, their interests, and speaking on behalf of them. The next video is also the more modern work, a contemporary work, maybe one of the latest works of Alina Kleitman, who's a young artist. And she also is specialized on certain feministic topics. She's speaking on behalf of a woman about some women's experience and stories. This very story is not an exclusion. This is the story about an old fat girl, chapter third, uh, chapter three, with the name of Plucked Forward. And it is created in the fairy tale manner. We will see now a bit of this video and you will hear rather similar intonations to the fairy tale how we were told by our grandmothers or mothers or nurses when they read fairy tales. See those big hairs and dark hairs on the fat chin transformed into the fat neck, the breast which is covered with pimples, with black heads. She took her stare down there and saw ugly hands with fat and short sausage-like simple man's fingers and uh, also eaten and layered nails. It's impossible to correct it. She was born a peasant. With the stare, dumb because of pain, she looked into the mirror again. Today, she will get what she wants. She can be beautiful. She was dumbly looking, boldly overcoming this pain. She was looking at herself again and her mother with a sharp nose. She's a beast and she's an evil one. She showed how to achieve a noble and clever experience. She plucked the part of her hairs out and made her forehead higher as it was done by Japanese geishas. So, in this video, the story is like the girl is waiting for her boyfriend to come and to look more beautiful, she's plucking out her eyebrows, she's providing some beauty onto her face and she's doing that in the way that in the end the boyfriend is telling her that he understands that there is a different person in front of him. And he says that he won't come to her next time because she's become different. So how does the artist do that? First of all, she's reading it with this so-called so fairy tale voice, as if something beautiful should happen. But on the other hand, she shows this sausage in the microwave, which is also changing. If we hear this voice, such a beautiful one, aroused, 
mystical even, so it seems to us that there should be something beautiful going on on the screen, or maybe in our imagination. Still, on the screen we can see a totally different thing. This sausage is just bursting out, it's exploding. And all of the inner parts of the sausage are breaking apart, and it's totally transforming and becoming even more weird, weirder. And in the end it's totally burnt. So this dramaturgy is created thanks to those effects which are going on in the microwave stove and the additional audio effects. But what's done by the artist, she is applying the object-driven feminism. When rather often we can see some beautiful bodies uh, of the women on the screen and it seems to us that those are perfect bodies with perfect shapes and this is what should be beautiful, she does it on the opposite. She looks at the ugly things, what leads to repulsion, leads to repulsion. she takes the sausage with which we shouldn't ever associate our own body or the women's body at all and this is how she compares that. Speaking about that girl and showing this sausage, she's speaking about that as something similar, but her artistic method is, on the contrary, to understand that the beauty is not how we change our own body, but what we can find within us. And if during the previous video we were speaking about certain future, about the babies who need to grow up and become the future of our society, we give certain hope and beauty for that, we dream that there will be something good in that. Here the artist looks at the reality when we understand that we are facing that we did not imagine ourselves like that. And even the character herself in this text mentions that I imagine myself so beautiful, but when I look in the mirror I understand that there is not me in front of me, but some monster. So in fact it's also rather interesting what we think about ourselves and how we perceive ourselves on the one side but maybe some other people can see us in a different way. The next work is also about the transformation piece, but about physical transformation. It is a bit unpleasant. I would first suggest to watch a bit of this video and then discuss it.
uh, Vlad? Well, in fact, uh, I don't regret about anything. This is the video by Mikola Ridney, the artist from Kharkiv. He shot it in 2016 in one of Kharkiv clubs. So this video is telling about a certain subculture which has certain harm, bodily harm onto themselves. They bring certain metallic hooks into themselves and then hang themselves on those hooks. And this is how they create the seesaws in the same way how it's done with a record in the beginning, vinyl record at the beginning of the video. So why do people do those transformations? Why do they put those objects into themselves and make themselves uh, hurt, though they are saying they are not hurt? Why do they feel this bodily pain? They are telling that in this way they are escaping the reality. They are escaping from the political and social issues. There is no way how they would like to impact what is going on or to feel this impact. They'd like to live in certain worlds of their own. And because of this bodily pain, because of those bodily reflections, this is how this escape is done. So, in fact, the next video doesn't have any obvious interferences into the body, into its representation and feelings, but it shows the broken and transformed social state which already exists and what they tried to escape from. This video was done by Sasha Kurmas in 2018 as part of the project Chronicles of the Current Events, which has the name of State of Emergency. So here the artist collected rather diverse fragments of media, from media, social media, and networks, what he filmed himself on the streets and outside, a certain, and edited into the certain film which documents this breakthrough moment. I would say that this was the year when Maidan has already taken place, the war has begun and it was going on for several years, and those social changes which were ongoing, he documents them in different social layers. We could watch the trailer now. Только обязательно объясните, что вы рисуете, чтобы нам было понятно. Угу. Ну, пусть это будет завязка с треугольником какая-то. Что это значит? Это знак вечности. Пусть будет так. А почему пусть будет так? Это может быть чем-то другим? Нет, это вечность. Это вечность, да? Это вечность. Вот. Это какая-то аура получается здесь. Видите на меня? Видите? Какая-то аура получается, здесь какой-то треугольник идет. Здесь. Я себя немножко рисовал. Это вы? Немножко, да, немножко, немножко я. This video was for channel projection and it was uh, shown together with picture that was m taken by Sasha Kurmas and it says that uh, 
your uh, sacrifices were in vain and you should perceive it not as a political piece but a broader one because he raises very many different uh, aspects of how our society lives how it functions what state we are in and in the beginning i was talking about this transgression that was happening in the beginning of the 90s when the society was adapting to the new order back then the artists were mainly focusing on themselves they studied their body they studied how this body communicates with different artistic medium present-day artists are not only focused on their own experience but also on the experience of ordinary people and Sasha Kurmas is one of those who are talking on behalf of different layers of society even the ones who are marginalized he demonstrates that they can also be characters in different artworks that this is not something that is uh, typical for elites that the art exists not only for selected people that art is also about ordinary people and for ordinary people now I'd like to shift to a different topic and I would like to once again go back to the female topic and we have already mentioned feminism practices and this is a video that was created by Elias Parvalesco, an artist who works with film archives among others. Uh, this artwork is called Lilith and video is slightly longer than an hour. He collected all possible film fragments um, that uh, belong to the Ukrainian film avant-garde and uh, these films tell very different stories but he cuts out all of the male characters living only women and here you can see two pictures on the one of them you can see one image layered on the another and uh, in another picture it is as if a woman uh, disappearing behind the keyhole but he doesn't interfere in this video and so if we see a woman it means that she was present in that film at that specific time and uh, it lasts as long as it lasted in original video or if there is no woman then for 13 minutes there will be no female character it means that she is not present there and quite often you can see that uh, female emancipation is happening by the metaphor of uh, madness we can also at the previous uh, video see uh, the so the society's madness and here a woman is shown as somebody who is going crazy for example uh, she uh, loses her child or her man she runs around an apartment uh, she sees visual hallucinations uh, and in the next work I'm not only gonna tell about it uh, but I'm gonna give a broader context of what Julia Holop works on she also talks a lot about female representation but in this video this is called look she's got a beard this is not a story about uh, the heroines even though we see lots of them this is a story about future about our understanding of something that is different and uh, here we can see the heroines women who are bearded they are like aliens who came to earth following certain goals and they move in into an apartment of a German family immigrants and a woman tries to be empathetic with them tries to understand who they are why they came here but the man on the contrary is treating them quite negatively he wants to call the police and cannot understand who they are what they are 
In the previous works, Ilya also raised topics that have to do with future, but she was mainly doing that in the context of her grandmother and her family, for example. And the first bit that we're gonna look at, uh, it is uh, dedicated to a grandma who goes to space, uh, and uh, this is a reference to Ilya Kabakov, a person who went to space from their own apartment, and Yulia explains what happens to this person afterwards when they find themselves in the space, what happens to them after the fall of Berlin Wall, after a collapse of the Soviet Union, and how that person lives in the space. But for her, this is not some abstract person or average Soviet human being, but her grandma. So I suggest we look at this bit. Thanks to the propositoric whirl blast reflector, we managed to transmit undulatory messages through space and time. However, the results are still somewhat uncontrollable. We are working hard to improve our device, but currently the error may be a millennium one way or another. Today is a beautiful day. This morning, I was contemplating the meteorite rings of the satellite of the planet Z-121. I love to spend hours sitting at the illuminator and looking at the stars and planets all around. At breakfast, I often play slides from Earth and listen to music. The composer Glinka is my favorite. When I was young and lived on Earth, his tunes were often broadcast on radio. The rest of my day I spend in the garden and laboratories taking care of plants. I also love cooking, especially when guests come. It's a good thing we no longer have to eat food from tubes, but have learned to synthesize food just like that on Earth. Yesterday, a new resurrection special. Can we please turn on the next beat? On the bed. Did you invite her to stay over? Certainly not. No, I didn't invite her. She is maybe your friend. No, I've never seen her before. I didn't see her too. Mark, look, she's pregnant. Is she even alive? Yes, I, I think she's breathing. She just seems to be asleep. Ma'am. Ma'am, can you hear me? Wake up! She must be deeply asleep. She's not responding at all. I wonder how she got inside. I don't know. But look, this is a beard. The woman has a beard, Agatha. It's impossible. I will call the police. No, Mark, wait. I am not kicking a pregnant woman out or making her go with the police. Are you crazy? We have the stranger in our house. We have to call the police. It is our house and there is no place for strangers in our home. Mark, she is pregnant. So what? So let's talk about this. I'm a woman too, you know, oh and I know I, oh what it's God. like to be pregnant. Let's is, talk about this. There is nothing to talk about. It is my house. It is our house. Mark. You understand? Why are you always like this? How can you be such a prick? She is pregnant. Are you crazy? We Do can you understand talk about me? this tomorrow. And tonight no. she is staying. Ah, Please, I am begging you. You don't understand, my dear. We have no other way. You have to decide it. Either her or me. Mark, you can't make me choose. Uh, the last night Artworks also analyze 
present day, they also raise certain issues that exist. But at the same time, she has a perspective of looking into the future. This is one of the artists uh, who are depicting visionary or utopia models in their works. And these heroines with beards, she tries to convey that probably they are not women, they probably are not of the same gender. We do not know who these aliens are. Maybe the beards are living the life of their own. If you look through the whole film, you'll see how this beard gets separated from a wo wo woman and starts uh, crawling around the apartment. So I do recommend you watching the whole video. You can now watch it in Pinchuk Art Center because now we have uh, the exhibition of those who were nominated for the prize of young artists. And the idea is that probably in the future there will be no division between one and another, between male and female, between humans uh, and somebody else, between creatures and non-creatures. Probably it's going to be some kind of utopia with harmony and uh, different type of relationship between completely different worlds uh, that uh, now we are uh, seen as different uh, camps fighting one another. Is that it for your presentation? Yes. Katya, thank you very much for looking at the media art of Ukraine starting 90s. And I see that so far we don't have questions, but I do have some. Katya, could you please tell? We saw that uh, starting 90s there were certain transformations undergoing. Transformations regarding how the artist work with the image of a human being. Could we generalize it somehow? How would you describe this transformation? What point are we at now? Do artists have this interest towards the image of a human being? How do they work with it? Or maybe there are some other topics uh, that their attention has shifted to, like environment and others. So the image of a human being, how relevant is this topic? How do artists currently work with it? It seems to me that it had transformed and uh, human being can be interested uh, in different ways because as I have mentioned before it was more of an intuitive search and it was not a human being being in the focus of attention but rather an artist who was going through all of these uh, emotions and now the artists are not only interested in the personal experience, uh, experience of their own families, but also an experience of different communities, societies. Uh, and uh, taking the example of Yulia Holup, uh, you can see that uh, she first starts focusing on her family, but then she shifts to more global issues such as environment. Uh, she's also very much interested in what's going to happen uh, with it in the future. And human being for her is a part of this large universe uh, that she looks at from different positions. Uh -huh. So we can say that uh, interest from some personal type and biographical things uh, now shifts to a more global general perspective. I would say that there are two views. First, we see something more global, general, looking for these global stories. And on the other hand, we still have uh, lots of different artworks uh, dedicated to personal stories. Uh, uh, that uh, work with archives and there are lots of people who are studying history using personal journals, archives, uh, for example, uh, collaborating whom I have already mentioned before, he has a film called uh, Grey Horses dedicated to his uh, great-grandpa and the central story is a story of his grandpa but uh, in the course of this 45 minutes of video, we see a totally different uh, history. History of uh, uh, anarchists, uh, volunteers at war, military, military, 
and it is all combined together thanks to the fact that his great grandpa was at war and uh, he first was fighting for one side and for the other and the metaphor of gray horses is that these are horses uh, that turn gray but uh, first they turn white then they turn black and in the end of their life they turn gray and you can trace this metaphor also uh, now when he is talking about uh, the story of his grandpa that he mentions katya thank you for your lecture thank you for answering questions thank you very much